Hello, I'm Bobby Baker, a woman and an artist. I always make a point of saying that, as mistakes have been made and people have expected to make a man. I hope it's obvious I'm a woman. The title of my short talk today is What Not to Say to People Experiencing Mental Distress. It could be seen as a grandiose claim to appear to speak on behalf of all people experiencing mental distress. I'm not trying to do that. I can only speak from my own perspective. But it's good to declare my personal interest in the subject and claim my credentials. Between 1997 to 2008, I was officially a care in the community client. Uh, I was, in a way, in a really bad way at times, and it went on for years, 11 years. During that time, I had 41 admissions for acute psychiatric residential care. I worked all the time, so it meant I was very busy, in, out, in, out. They were terrible times but lots of good things happened too. I met great people, I learned a lot, I got enough great help to turn my life and my mind around. And ultimately, that long, rather tortuous journey led me to where I am now, which is the happiest, the most fulfilled, the most reflective, and the most at-peace period of my life. And I'm very proud to be part of a growing number of people who are keen to speak out about what we think can help based on our own experience. So back to the subject and two short stories. In 2000, I got a commission to make a new piece of work to mark the new millennium. So we got a large flatbed truck and bolted a car seat on the back. I got a megaphone. And one fine day, we drove around the streets of London for eight hours, with me sat on the back of the truck, yelling at people to pull themselves together. I'd had enough of being told that by then, and we all know it's not helpful. Enough said. In 2007, I had breast cancer, and in the first three months, we were showered as a family with hundreds of cards, phone calls, Flowers, offers of food, support, and kindness. It really helped. It made us sad that in all the years of struggling as a family with my illness, we probably got two to three cards from my close friends. We realized that people had cared, but must have really struggled to know what to say. So I hope, rather humbly, that my three what-not-tos may help. And I also have one groundbreaking, life-shattering point that will solve all these problems forever. <laughs> no pressure. So number one, the silence. That is, saying nothing and doing nothing. We are in Britain, and British culture has traditionally been based on the stiff upper lip, on embarrassment, on bottling it up, especially for men. Our society is slowly changing with the welcome cultural diversity, the media, and an increase in the display of emotions. So beware the silence. It's common to think that if you say something, it will upset people. I can tell you, it's loads more upsetting for no one to say anything at all. Just say something, even if it's hard. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. Send a card, ask them what would help, offer company if they'd like it. Sad, depressed, or even crazy people won't remember what you say, but they will remember the experience of being with someone who cared. Being with people truly listening is hard work. You will feel exhausted if you truly listen to a depressed person, so pace yourself but your presence and kindness will help. Number two, the nodding head. I've had this loads, I still get it. Um, people who do manage to ask quite often dip their head like this and speak in a higher voice. How are you? Who are you? Um, it's very annoying, unintentionally patronizing, 
and implicitly parental. Even if people are behaving rather childishly, if you're old enough to be an adult, then you need and deserve to be spoken to like an adult. And don't forget to remain an adult yourself. You are not their parent, unless you really are, of course. And even then, stay an adult, because you're both adults. Be aware of what you can manage, though. Stick to that. Keep your boundaries. One foot in the water, one foot on dry ground. True drow two drowning people is not very helpful. Number three, the expert. This is the person who rattles off lots of expert information, usually quite loudly due to anxiety and a desire to help. The intention is clearly to show support and knowledge with stories of your family or friends, my schizophrenic sister, my bipolar brother, actually they're your brother who happens to have that diagnosis, <laughs> my depressed dog, oops, sorry. One of the most helpful things anyone has ever said to me was, mental health is a subject that provokes strong feelings across the board. Try and remember that we are people first, not diagnoses, not statistics, and that the diagnostic framework is a contentious and changeable field. Avoid using words you don't understand. Jargon, potted psychology, cod psychiatry. It's best to leave it to others and be yourself. So, on to this groundbreaking, life-shattering point that will solve all your problems. I've got a very clever cousin, a retired psychiatric social worker. Quite brainy, she's a fellow Christian. She's reading this book, by Kelly and Kelly, A Modern Psychology for the 21st Century. It's got lots of stuff in it about subatomic particles, quantum physics, the idea of entanglement theory, and what happens when one atom sets off a reaction in another. Einstein apparently called this spooky action at a distance. Physics is not my strong point, but what she described chimed so much with my thoughts, which are that we are interconnected as human beings at every level. We have brains, which act as tr transmitters and receivers, but there is growing evidence that we also have a collective mind, a collective spirit, a collective and connected consciousness that physicists are trying to map. I can't do justice to this subject, but it's what I think, that it's just being human, being with people, showing you care even at a distance, connecting, truly connecting, and not avoiding, that that will, in some mysterious way, really help. It's about community and caring, sharing humanity, and ultimately, it's about love. So, Reach out to people in ways that you can manage. Don't avoid them. Ask what will help. Don't tell people what to do. Go and do it with them. Phone them. Send a card. Go to the supermarket. Offer to cook something. Have a cup of tea, a coffee, or a drink. Eat together. As Cheryl Sandberg said, lean in. <laughs> crack a joke and laugh. Personally, that's the best thing for me. We need to make connections. Giving advice is not connecting, but being with someone is. Thank you. <laughs>